Welcome back, everyone. We're here for another discussion today. Deep philosophical discussion. I think a lot of those deep thoughts, probably too much, probably too much. I should like get outside and do things. But I've been wondering a lot why it is we do the things we do. You know, like what? why are people people what makes us the way we are one of the things i've been wondering is why do people like horror like people have liked horror since forever since before i can remember that's for sure they've liked spooky stories you know it's not just the movies it's not just freddy krueger or the latest stephen king novel it's the urban legends that we've told around the campfire for forever like what's out there in the dark beyond us and a lot of people like that. A lot of people like the spooky feeling and all that. I don't get it. I just have never understood why people like to be scared. I, mean, I like there to be suspense in a story, so I, I kind of get it. I like murder mysteries and Hitchcock and what's going to happen, you know. But it, it's not the same, is it? it? It's not like jump scares and and stuff that's disturbing so much that it, it sticks with you so much that 20 years later you're not going to ever watch that movie ever again, right? Right? It's not just me. It can't, it can't just be me. But it's true. There are many people who just love to be scared because um, there are limits to it. There are limits to fiction. A book you can put down, a movie you can pause or walk out of. So it's not real. So it's okay to be scared. Unless your imagination is such that it goes, well, who says it couldn't be real? Which is so helpful. Thank you, imagination. So yeah, I've wondered about that for a while. Like, why would anyone put themselves through it? Why would they enjoy it? Even within the confines of something with limitations, something that's definitely fiction, is, is it uh, fight or flight syndrome and I'm just too much on the flight side? Which, that's possible, and there certainly might be other explanations, but there are many other possible reasons why people love horror. The many possible reasons why people love horror are, it's a high school book report now. <laughs> no, really. There are several reasons, and I will go through them now. Number one, threat response. Just the way we're wired, right? If we have a primal fear of threats. So this will give us a safe place to experience those threats and gauge our responses to them, like a holodeck for fear. So if nothing else, you can see what doesn't work. And also, if you happen to end up living in a big mansion that tends to experience power outages and a lot of thunderstorm activity, it's probably best not to have a cat. So yeah, you can learn uh, about how you respond to danger, which helps you learn a little bit about yourself. For example, I've learned that if I ever encounter a malevolent ghost, I'm going to scream like a little girl and dive under the couch. It's good to know. Number two, excitation transfer theory. This is a theory put forth by one Dolph Zillman in the 1970s. Basically, it's the good feeling you get when something really horrible has happened, but then something good happens at the end of it, usually in fiction. So... Yay for the zombie apocalypse that kills most people in the world because two people survive it all, I guess. Number three, morbid curiosity. Come with us to the dark side. We have cookies. Many of us wonder about the darkness of humanity, if only because it's not a major part of our lives and we're not anxious for it to be a major part of our lives. But that doesn't stop us being curious, where humans, humans are generally curious. So we want to know what dark stuff entails and also what it's like to go through it. So again, safe space, holodeck, is, is that a copyrighted term? Holographic room. Holographic room to a safe, sp safe place to experience those things, yeah. Number four, thrill-seeking. If you're someone who skydives, bungee jumps, takes their coffee black, you may cap rebel you, then this may be something you enjoy. If you need that shot of adrenaline just to feel alive, or if you just 
enjoy the feeling, then this may be for you. If you're someone whose knuckles turn white gripping the bar of the kitty coaster, then it may be better uh, uh, that you avoid this altogether. Number five, lower empathy. This one's a possibility, really just a possibility, that people who have natural levels of lower empathy enjoy seeing people in awful situations. <laughs> they're in this terrible situation, they're not going to get out. <laughs> There's been no definite research that proves this. There's been research, but no definite, no definite answers as of yet. Number six, males. Don't come at me. This is actual proven research. Manly men of the male types are uh, the type of people that are more likely to enjoy and appreciate depictions of fear and violence. I don't know what this says about the manly male types, but, uh, you know, at least they're um, using it to practice their threat response, hopefully. Number seven, anxiety. Now, research is growing that suggests that people with anxiety like horror movies. And this seems counterintuitive, at least to anyone without anxiety. Like, why would you want to induce that? But again, this is part of the safe space type of situation. This is a place where you can experience those feelings and everything turns out okay in the end one way or another. This is a place where you can manage those feelings where if you're in real life, it's more unpredictable, it's more uncontrolled, and it's harder to manage. And that's just amazing to me. People with anxiety, like, this is what it's like all the time for you? Like, I can't handle it within a controlled setting. I can't deal with it just watching a horror movie, but this is what it's like all the time for you? You have my sympathy, definitely. Wow. So, what does all this prove? I don't know if it proves anything, but it sure was. I found it interesting, and I hope you did too. It's neat to learn other perspectives, and there are a lot of perspectives in the world. The way we react to stuff and why it's all part of the narrative. It's, it's all part of our story. So I will continue with this story, this YouTube story that I am creating. And it seems kind of disjointed, but hopefully it all becomes part of the whole eventually when we pull out and see the big picture. But for the time being, we've got to take it a step at a time. So I hope you'll join me next week. Bye. One of the things I was wondering about is why dogs make so much noise when they drink water. Oh my God.